and it's just yeah. So hello everyone. My name is Marcelo Matias. I'm a transport planner at Arup Amsterdam. And together with Thomas, Tonk, and Katarina from Team 2, we have been working on the team infrastructure mobility for the Euro Delta. And we thank already for the supervision of Manuela Trianese and Rin van der Waal. So our vision is called Mobility as a Neighbor, which expresses that mobility is a means to achieve an overarching territorial project. So the territorial project is where we can truly provide accessible opportunities for people to be who they want to be. So mobility is a means to make these opportunities accessible and accessible for everyone. So this is our human oriented statements. We selected the Meuse Rhine Euro region as our location, which is composed by the cities of Liège, Arnhem and Maastricht. And we chose the metropolitan scale, which is where the Euro Delta's vision is not yet very clear on how to include smaller cities and towns into the economic projects that are led by central cities. So we know well what to do on regional level, kind of high speed train connections and et cetera. But when we go to the metropolitan level, it's not that clear. And this is the case for this region that we selected. So this region is a bit outside of the center of attention, which is the Randstad, the Cologne region. Um, and this is the, also the case with this location that uh, we have sm smaller towns, which are not rarely spatially isolated. Oh. So this region is also a rich cultural and historical interchange that is a treasure from European history, but it creates a lot of identity walls that make it harder to cooperate. So this is also a point that we can bring a nice solution. So we want to break these walls. We want to integrate the smaller towns with the mobility and the territorial project. And our mobility as enabler vision is proposing a territorial project of this transition from this post-industrial declining region to a knowledge-based economy. So Exchange of knowledge is the, will be the primary role of this region, led by universities and smart industry. And the mobility strategy will be a way of provoking free flows of people, ideas, and goods into this new functional urban region. So we propose a multimodal hub network. We have Maastricht, Liège, and Arnhem that will contain central mobility hubs. And the smaller town will contain small-scale mobility hubs. So this mobility hub system, it will be seamlessly connected with a fully integrated ticket and IT system. So it will be like we have in the Netherlands with the OV chip card. It will be fully with the same card and transborder uh, as well. Um, and mobility will be planned door to door as mobility as a service. So you are going in your train and you're already being able to see the, the taxi or to, to go home not okay taxi or some kind of shared mobility or you can take already see what will be your next stage of your trip and we have a full net zero mobility strategy so we have focus on active and electric modes and then you might ask okay what about the roads and and uh, cars so we go bold on this so we do not build we do not build a single extra kilometer of roads so our development will be fully on public transport um, and shared mobility and active travel. And we will just keep and optimize with smart, smart management, smart traffic management systems, the huge uh, road infrastructure that we already have. So the hubs will be a way to keep the smaller towns again in the loop of economic prosperity. So we want to make them again belong to their urban regions. And we see that the future is human oriented and above all, the future is inclusive. How to make this possible? So we mapped some of our stakeholders, which will be most importantly, rail companies, operators of public transport and new operators of this kind of mobility as a service and shared mobility, which is still a gap today and municipal and regional governments will be the most important ones. And then we have other kind of more observing or participatory board bodies like local population and NGO citizen movements. Um, and we are aligning to the goals formulated in the documents, mostly the European Green New Deal with our full net, full free net carbon uh, proposal and the territorial agenda for 2030. So if you look on the right, we look at the timeline. So in 2020 to 2030, we are mostly looking at communication, fostering a regional identity. So create an awareness with citizens and local planners for the need of this integrated functional urban region 
Um, then we have kind of some kind of tactical urbanism idea. So we start small and strategic with the hub that already exists. And we start um, rolling up with a knowledge development program in universities and knowledge hubs. So 2030, 2040, we are restructuring the three main hubs, Maastricht, Liège and Arnhem with expansion and, and uh, addition of new modes with the mobility transition. And the knowledge exchange programs are in full power between universities and knowledge industry. And that's where uh, 2034 that we really see that the, the flows and the activities start to, to give results, economic results. Uh, and 2000, 2040 to 2050, we have a final, the final steps in this mobility and energy transition. So we are, we are reaching already a net zero carbon and we have this fully integrated functional uh, urban system. So, um, our impact is mostly that we are creating a, a net zero and a fully inclusive territorial strategy where all smaller towns are included. We are creating a flexible and resilient transport system. And the, the selected region is a great example for other urban regions in the Euro Delta, which are receiving less attention. We have a test for an entirely integrated transport in the Euro Delta with this integrated uh, technology and ticketing system, which will, in our vision, be upscaled. And once one day, the full Euro Delta, mostly in 2050, will be fully reachable with a single unified transport card. Um, we have main points of the vision that are applicable to other center periphery relations. And what we think that we can really help as well is to resignify border locations. So. This is a great example of a diverse cultural region where we can really create a fully new Euro Delta identity. So thank you. Thank you very much, Marcelo. A bold vision. Thanks a lot. Uh, uh, I would like to invite immediately to the next team to present so that we keep the, the time frame. Team three. Hello, everyone. I will be presenting uh, on behalf of my colleagues. Uh, okay. Can you see my screen now? Yes, perfectly. Okay. So uh, we covered the circular economy topic together with Mati, Melike, Valeska, and Roberta, supervised by Marcin and Anna Luisa. Uh, as a title for our project, we chose Code Triangle. Uh, the meaning of this title will be further discussed in the presentation. Uh, we chose our, our location in, uh, in, uh, in the triangle between Liège, Aachen and Eindhoven. Um, to the main concern we want to address in these uh, cities is the empowering of regional development. And uh, we chose uh, specifically cities of concern instead of uh, tier two or secondary uh, cities, because uh, in our opinion, secondary cities could mean that it, uh, it somehow not, uh, they are not so important. Um, so we are addressing uh, these issues in the regional development in uh, innovation and research ecosystem. And we want to increase the industrial res resilience and in a sustainable and a circular way. Uh, we aim to establish a network of hubs that work together uh, by sharing knowledge. Um, and uh, this uh, uh, network of hubs will establish a pool of uh, patents, intellectual property, and intellectual assets for cross collaboration in between different areas, uh, such as uh, new materials, maybe artificial intelligence, big data, and other cutting edge uh, technologies. Uh, so, uh, the uh, behind the scope of our proposal is that there is a, a very big gap between uh, research and industry. And we aim to mitigate this gap by creating a circular um, mechanism to transfer knowledge between uh, uh, different actors. So we chose Aachen because it uh, can offer academic power. 
Eindhoven will contribute to, uh, to, uh, with uh, its expertise. And Liège has already an infrastructure that can be repurposed and an industrial park. Um, for the stakeholders, we will uh, rely on the municipalities collaboration, EU, Euro Delta Knowledge Platform, of course, um, stakeholders, private investors, maybe uh, university, of course, as they are uh, the uh, furnishers of uh, mines. And as for the timeline, we are thinking to, to develop two separate. Um, to separate the uh, uh, timelines. The first one is for the knowledge uh, platform, which by 2021, uh, we would uh, research and uh, elaborate um, an app uh, on the uh, knowledge platform. And uh, for the circular cities, we will, by, in the 2021, 20, uh, we'll uh, research more and by 2025 we should have a more clear uh, ambitious and uh, policy goals by 2030 the industrial site hub should be already uh, developed and um, by 2050 and further this hub could be already replicated uh, across euro delta and why not across uh, the whole europe um, so uh, our vision is uh, like the uh, the clusters of knowledge is uh, uh, transferable, open and innovative, and we, it will create a li link between academia, think tanks, uh, startups and uh, established entrepreneurs. Um, the project should bring new life to, to abundant infrastructure and repurpose them to, to the new time necessities and adapt them to, to a new uh, uh, criteria which goes um, which aligns with the development goals and the uh, climate neutral design and so uh, the end goal is to foster, foster continuous development and of initiatives and to improve the current industrial ecosystem and to identify new circular economy um, initiatives um, the project can be done um, upscaled by uh, following a simple principle. We use the principle of unfolding a triangle and the cooperative triangles, uh, which is the, the idea behind the name of the project. So after establishing a, a collaboration pl platform between three cities, this model could be uh, transferred to a totally new location, like in uh, example B on the right side but also it could be um, extended by adding a new city to the net network, like in example A. Uh, this option could, could offer uh, many benefits uh, from the accelerated uh, uh, collaborating process as already town, uh, the, uh, the previous two towns uh, or cities have, uh, uh, have resources and have collaborated before. Um, so uh, such an approach will allow participants to uh, scale depending on real-time needs, uh, but also to conserve administrative resources and minimize costs. Also, this approach should be, um, this triangles, this else should, uh, should be re resilient and somehow autonomous. So for example, during an economical crisis, or if one cell decides to focus on one particular um, project, they should be able to work on and to focus on their own interests. So, yeah, that's it. Thank you very much, Nicoletta, and to the whole team. Uh, also, a very nice uh, vision. Uh, extremely important to link uh, research and industry. You have managed even to introduce a triangle, a co-triangle and a circular yeah. principle. <laughs> yeah, actually nice. we are thinking about mini deltas in a in, in bigger delta. Yeah. But yeah, we stick to triangles. Nice. Helmut, uh, uh, next, yeah, we are about the, the time. So yes. we already have to jump to the next uh, uh, team. That would be yeah. Team uh, Helmut, yeah. can I just point out quickly one thing? Yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, so uh, to all the teams, uh, please mention the what uh, uh, at the beginning, mention your theme, which theme you are mm -hmm. addressing and the team number. So these two things and I'm checking the time. Team three took uh, a little bit more. Team two was fine. So please, uh, from now, it we have to be a bit strict with this. Thank you. Thank you, Alankita. So the floor is to the next uh, team. That would be team four. So hello, everyone. Uh, can everyone hear me and see my screen? Yes, perfect. OK. So uh, hi, uh, my name is Anton Jan, and I'm in team four, Climate Energy, with uh, Maria, Michelle, and Secher. And uh, we tackle the problem climate energy with our project uh, Rheinmas Energy Landscape. Uh, we chose a location of which many people already know as uh, the Rheinisches Revier. Uh, and it's most known for its brown coal production. And it's also one of the main reasons why we chose this location. As uh, climate energy uh, is heavily linked with the uh, brown coal production, but also the uh, phasing out of brown coal production and the phasing in of the green uh, energy production. And looking on this uh, location, we had uh, five main, main issues, not only specific for this location, uh, 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 aligned with this location, but also aligned with the agendas that we have. And this is a, a European Green Deal or the Paris uh, Climate Agreement. And we looked five points, which is the increase of health damage, the fragmentation of uh, landscape and settlements, the loss of agriculture soil and the decrease of soil quality, the loss of biodiversity and the change of habitats, and also the, uh, the increase uh, frequency and intensity of floods and droughts. But unlike many projects until now that looked location only, only until the German border, we also included, uh, we looked uh, on the other side of the border and also we included the Rhine and Maas. Uh, and we thought, how could we integrate the whole region uh, and not only looking on the brown location, uh, brown coal mining location itself, but uh, cities uh, along these two rivers and between these two rivers. And our main idea is to have a Duren uh, uh, which is now the brown coal mining location to uh, reinvent, to reconstruct it as a green city, uh, to become a new center between uh, Germany and the uh, Netherlands and Belgium to strengthen the polycentric uh, structure of the Euro Delta. And also uh, the blue uh, uh, line parts are potential areas where we see it's, uh, uh, we integrate the energy infrastructures, but also the diverse programs there is about uh, how to uh, build new energy production sites and how to connect these uh, infrastructures. And the, in the southern parts, you see it's like a green belt. There is see, uh, we see the potential of uh, connecting the existing uh, leisure areas, the national parks, the forests uh, with the, um, also the integration of uh, the projects uh, on one side, the academical side, but also the practitioner side. And on the map, you see the numbers where uh, according to the uh, issues and just example where this issue could be tackled uh, also specific, uh, specifically where this issue could be tackled. And then to resources, uh, on the left side, we you see the stakeholders. Anton, you, have, uh, you have one and a half minutes. Okay. Uh, just uh, a reminder. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Resources, and uh, you see we have a private, public, practitioner research, and the main message is that we integrate all. We integrate all the practitioner, and we integrate all the researcher in this area, and in the end, we connect the practitioner and the researchers. And then I'll give it to Maria to present the timeline and the impact. 
Uh, yeah, so our main frameworks are the two rivers on the left hand side and on the middle. And what is um, special about the Rheinische Revier is that you're going to have lakes in the former mining uh, areas in the middle. So this is kind of our uh, specialized framework. So in 2050, um, we wanted to have like a milestone when one uh, of the lake is already in a uh, like filled to a certain point and before that we would need to have like forestization programs education programs to have workers formally uh, working for the fossil fuel industry being trained to work for the renewable energy uh, to create new job opportunities um, and also have um, like temporary uses until this is happening uh, and we have this new energy landscape and just a quick for the next slide um, and this clip that you can see with the, with the rivers, we can see in multiple parts of the Euro Delta. And we think that the Rheinische Revier could be a model region for these kind of transitional areas to um, transform them into a energy landscape to fit to the uh, Green Deal and biodiversity strategy, et cetera, that Anton already mentioned before. Okay, five and a half. <laughs> Thank you very much, Marie and Anton. So let's jump quickly to the next team. That would be team Bai. Yes, uh, hello, good morning, everyone. I will try to share the presentation. Um, yes, uh, do you see it? Yeah, it's not full screen yet. Now we see your presentator slide also. So. Ah, okay. Well, but doesn't matter. Maybe, maybe it's also okay. Is it, or yeah. should I change it somehow different? Yeah, I think it would be clearer to change it, and it's bigger. If it's no. if it's not possible, just do it. Uh, yeah, honestly, I am not really yeah. sure how to do it. So just go ahead. Just go ahead. It's fine. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, uh, I'm Lucas, and we are Team Five. Uh, we are we are team together with Rob and Rita as well. And uh, our main subject was about water management and resilience. And uh, we would like to present to you the Rhine Curator. This is our topic. Uh, so, so the vision for the Rhine Curator, we we were somehow struggling in the beginning, what how to tackle this subject, and what we see is that uh, the Rhine region is very complicated. So it has many complexities, and we wanted to somehow answer it somehow. So the the first question, and we wanted to ask, is that uh, we wanted to map all the complexities. So, for example, these are natural rhythms. Uh, or the transportation along the river or water quality, waste production and pollution and culture. So we wanted to tackle it and then transform it uh, to one region, uh, one working somehow very coherent organism. Uh, and together with mediating power uh, relations between the upstream and the downstream. But then we had, uh, uh, well, we had to address it somehow. So how do we do it? So we wanted to promote and enhance specific regions to perform its true best. So uh, we were looking for, for example, water infiltration storage, where could it be in the region? And then we are looking for a space for the river or room for the river program. We also protect natural systems, organize logistic centers, uh, densify the cities, but also keep them permeable, rail and road connections, agriculture fields on the best soils, knowledge hubs, and etc. So we were somehow looking at more holistic approach. Uh, and then we were thinking that everything, of course, has to happen with respect to natural systems and cultural landscapes. So what you see here, uh, one of the first drawings is about one system, but many identities. So we wanted to spot it on the map. How does it work? So we wanted to promote one system, but within the system, you have different identities, which, you sh which should be promoted as, as still seen separate or, 
working uh, well, working together, but still keeping the, their identities. Uh, we also thought that this culture is strengthened by the river. So we were thinking again, this is one of the systems and uh, we wanted to address it. This, the Rhine curator, this is the person who will be involved in it. So here you see the representation and the Rhine curator works as a museum curator or our idea was also from uh, Flanders. There is an organization who is supervising every uh, project somehow and it's independent. And it's very important that it's cross-border expert which is supervising the region of the Rhine. Uh, so he can spot the future challenges related to water. For example, the re resiliency, sustainability, future growth of cities. And then somehow, so he is the main manager, uh, independent manager, and uh, also acts as a stakeholder within the holistic overview of the whole water system. So it's also about, mid uh, he's a mediator between the upstream and the downstream and somehow has this bigger overview than the smaller units. Uh, and uh, now I, I give it to Rob. Yes, um, so I, uh, the idea is uh, indeed inspired also on the Baumeister ID, which is uh, an organiza organization in Belgium that um, guards the quality of architecture and spatial planning. Um, so the same idea would be that this uh, independent organization acts as an advisor um, to smaller projects and smaller, uh, and also instigate smaller projects, and he will overlook the small steps um, on in the larger system. So maybe you can go to the next slide. So um, uh, this is quite of a, a summary. So the Ryan curator could uh, advocate a coherent water system together with its complexities. Um, and could look beyond the administrative borders into the territory of water and uh, be a catalyzer for uh, resilient projects on the smaller scale, uh, advising um, how they impact on the larger scale. So we want to leave the ad, uh, administrative borders and look at the uh, borders, borders of the watershed um, to cross uh, the different uh, boundaries. Um, so he would re represent the larger scale flows uh, and could become a separate stakeholder on the smaller scale. Um, so I think this is a bit uh, our five minutes. Thank you. Yes. Thank, thank you, you so very much, much Lucas and Rob. Uh, very interesting idea, also a new role. Um, but we have to jump quickly to the last team of this first round. So team six, please. Mm -hmm. Hey, good morning. Do you see the presentation? It's still black for me. Oh, now we can. Now it's visible. Yeah. There we go. So good morning. Uh, well, thanks for uh, giving us the five minutes. Um, we played as team six for no more dead campuses. And that comes from the idea of the digitalization and the post COVID strategies. Uh, and we represent a pretty multidisciplinary team of mostly the University of Aachen and, and uh, Theo Dortmund and uh, me, myself, is Arab and Theo Delft and uh, all represent or have a name that have meaning except for mine. <laughs> so uh, Amal will, uh, will give the rest of the pitch uh, for today. Okay, um, thank you everybody for joining us. Um, for today, we're gonna be talking about this idea of uh, digitalization and how it impacted us during the whole COVID scenario. We all realize that to some degree it has impacted our work routine and our work lifestyle. And since everybody has been going uh, to home office, um, it really shows that there were certain scenarios where we can see um, office areas and campus areas dying out to some degree. Um, we also connected this to the idea of what we call the transport banana, which is also like the, the, blue, uh, the corridor between the Rhine and Alpine uh, region. And uh, within this area, there's also a cluster of uh, campuses that exist um, in this region. And with that, we wanted to analyze a little bit how the campuses have been affected. And um, between us from coming from different campuses, we could say that, for example, in the situation in Aachen, we find that entire quarters have been completely dead, so to say. Um, we went about this through looking at the different layers and what is the next layer that we can add in to change the scenario and to um, react to, to what has been coming out. So we have like the transnational space. Um, I, can't, I don't know if you can see the whole um, 
thing yet. So there's like the transnational spaces that um, is uh, going on. And then there is the city structures on top. And within them, there are these campuses. And these campuses are really well connected through um, existing transportations. And this can be like a mode of exchangers of actors um, throughout time. And the layer that we would like to add on top of this is this digital and urban exchange, um, which is what we're proposing. And this can come to a vision of like a hyper-reality and physicality mixture. And this might sound a bit um, out of it and then like a fairy somehow, but what we see it uh, that can actually uh, come together is the fact that we have currently a concept called digital nomads. So digital workers who are able to um, move within areas super freely um, based on existing transport routes and at the same time the fact that they have to work remotely from home. We're going about this through the fact that the idea of this remote working is more likely to be um, continuous um, in the upcoming years or it's likely to, to evolve a bit greater based on all of our experiences right now. And um, digital nomads are actually um, a thing because there are visas, for example, in Germany, you can get a visa to be a digital nomad and you are able to get, go to a country for a year and work there. And so through this, we're bridging this gap and uh, bringing together the digital nomads and university campuses. And that can be stated from the actor point of view. But if you're taking workers and moving workers that does not um, go against this idea of a dead campus being dead when they're not really able to do anything else. So the other side to it is also the fact that we would like to also have a urban exchange. So um, we were talking from our experiences being in Aachen, um, the center has uh, of the, the campus has been quite dead right now because it's just office buildings. But in, for example, uh, Nienke from uh, TU Delft was telling us about in that scenario, they have an urban park in between. And so what if the universities can come together and have sort of a, um, a joint conversation about how they can change their university areas um, and make joint, joint laboratories or joint um, dormitories for, for their students to some degree and have this mixture of different users and different actors and also in include the community members then. And so we, we, we also find challenges and this bureaucratic steps and creating these cohesions, but we need to also remember that there is connections between people. And I would state that the beginning to the digital nomad uh, of campuses is actually when you look at the Erasmus students of the last um, year. They technically have been moving to countries and just working from the home dormitories. So if we take this aspect and actually enlarge it to a way that we make it a community, we make it a exchange of spaces as well, this could go a bit greater. And that's why we say that we're working on the regional scale. Yes, the campus is, let's say, the street or the neighborhood scale, but there is this regional exchange that can also happen. And with that, that, I'm sorry to interrupt one more. Yeah, we're almost finished. And with that, we're finally at the impact that we see this happening. Um, the impact uh, is that we're taking advantage of existing uh, networks and structures, and we can see it um, evolving from like these neglected areas being retrofitted and upscaled, not just to this region, but to the entire world ultimately. And that's the end of our presentation.